flash back to 2020, and I think it was 2020, and I just... I decided to have a go at home brewing, and the easiest way to do that was to buy the Pinter. And I signed up for a subscription, and I'd, we had some good luck with it, didn't we? We had some fun with it. We did, yeah. We had some nice beers. Uh, unfortunately, the brewery, the, the drums that they give you, they, I think they're only probably good for about 12 to 18 months. And after about 18 months, mine started to get a little bit worn out. Uh, so I stopped brewing. I stopped uh, using the beers and stuff like that and had a rest. Um, but they still kept in touch, like they still sent me emails, you know, uh, come back and all this lot. And then the other week they sent a new version of Pine Trees Out. Answer this uh, questionnaire and you can get it for half price. So it's 99 quid. The old one was 70. The new one's 99, but I got it for 49 because um, of the doing the questionnaire. I got 50 quid off, basically. Right, sure. Um, so yeah, I thought good, good deal. I'll order that because when we make this beer, then we don't buy beer, and this beer is a little bit cheaper than some of the things we buy, and also it's a fun thing to do over the weekend. It's like a hobby. Uh, so yeah, this is the pint of three. So we're going to open it up and have a quick look, and then at some point, probably not while vlogging, I will um, prepare it and we'll have some beer in a couple of weeks' time. I do seem to remember the last one folded out all impressively, but this one seems to be a lot of different cardboard boxes. Welcome to a world of fresh beer. So um, they've now started doing um, collaborations. So I ordered a pint of fresh press with it. I've signed up for one press a month. I used to do two. So we're not going to make as much beer as we used to. Um, but I've ordered this press to try this new one, which is the Yeasty Boys one. So we'll have a look at that in a bit. And then we have, this will be our brewing dock. Everything looks pretty much the same. It's just been upgraded and changed a little bit. It had some trouble, I think, with the pint of two. And they've basically um, solved all those problems with the pint of three. So I think they're on the sort of trying to get back the um, customers again. I never bought the pint of two. First large part is that, that is the brewing dock. So this is the bit you pop your uh, pinter on to brew your beer. Um, and then it just goes in the cupboard until you've drunk your beer and then you make another one. <laughs> um, I mean, it's not changed a huge amount. The plastic's like makes a touch, I guess. Um, I do still have the old pint of kit. It was in the garden when we were cleaning the other day. It probably, it, to be honest, if I cleaned it, I could probably use it again. There was nothing inherently wrong with it, but I just kind of had a break on brewing. Uh, if you buy the pint, it looks like you get a free glass at the minute. I think it's if you buy it and sign back up for the Fresh Beer Club, which I have done because you get free postage and it's like you can stop it anytime you want. So it kind of makes sense to sign up for it. And they sometimes send you free gifts like courses and stuff. Meanwhile, bedlam is occurring in the corner. I should say as well, this isn't any sort in any way, shape or form a paid thing. Uh, I bought this out of my own money. They're not sponsoring us for this. And there's one last big box, which will have our painter itself in. Oh, it does still have the uh, fancy box that opens up in a nice fashion. I, do, I did quite like this the first time we got it. Ta-da! I got a blue one. You have a choice of, I think, blue, red and grey. There used to be a lot more colours. No, just blue, red and grey. Well, this looks very familiar. If you saw the old painter, it's just slightly upgraded and jazzed up a little bit. It's got, I believe the differences in this tap here is very more, it's like a lot more um, involved and complicated. And I think they did have some problems with the painter 2 on this tap, but they've resolved them all on the painter 3. And on the top, they did also change. There's a way to drop hop oils, I think, in there now to make your beer taste even better. But there's only certain beers, including the one I've bought, that use it. I think what I'll try and do is maybe tonight I'll try and set this up and run through the proven process with it again. Uh, I'm sure on the vlog, because it's pretty easy. It's straightforward as well, and it's fun. The only thing I will say from experience is if you're making a beer in the pinter, just pop the pinter in a bucket just in case, because it does build up pressure because it's beer, and if it does leak, it's in a bucket then. And here is your tap handle. That's changed since the last one. It's like a piece of metal. The old ones are metal too, but it's like a like a cast piece of metal where it used to be like rolled metal in the past. Very funky. Um, 
I've still got all my old handles and stuff as well, including my limited edition um, <laughs> brewing club one from the bit from the early days. And basically what it is, is once you've brewed the beer, you pop the handle on there, bang it in the fridge and serve the beer straight out of the drum so you don't need to bottle it or anything like that. It's not like full brewing because all the stuff that you mix, like you'd mix and you'd, you'd boil when brewing all the ingredients and that is all done for you. So it's kind of you just take it from there. Look at this. Boing. <laughs> I've thrown the box over there so they're like, ooh, there's a box to play with. Oh, and finally, you do get like a guidebook. I'm assuming this goes into how to use it and what beers you can get. Yeah, how to clean it, things like that. Probably worth having a look at some of the beers you can get. Because it isn't just beer, actually. No, I never tried, tried it, but you can brew cider in it as well. I just don't drink much cider. There you go. Well, from Forest Cider, that one's an old one that I could have brewed. Public House IPA is actually the first thing I ever brewed in it. Uh, Dark Matter, Space Hop is very good, but it's strong. Tropical Debate is um, a new one. It's a New England IPA. I think that's with the, yeah, that's got the hopper in it for the uh, the hop oils or whatever they're called. The stout is, I never had much luck with the stout. It was good, but I just didn't get on with it too well. Bavarian Rhapsody was lovely. It's like a a dark German beer, lost in translation, brown ale. I need to give that one another go because I think I had a go at it and I didn't mix it properly. It is brewing, so it will go wrong occasionally, but it's just fun to try. Stars and Stripes, Vice Nights is absolutely lovely. That's the one I've got on my first uh, monthly order, which should come through at the end of the month. So yeah, anyway, that's the pint of three. And in a bit, we'll go and brew some beer. I'll get it started at least. Oh, there was one thing. I did forget to actually look at the, uh, this is what you brew with. This was extra, so I think this was like 17 or 18, something like that for this one, because it is, it might have been a little bit more actually, because it is the uh, Yeasty Rise one. Uh, but yeah, you used to be, used to got used to get like a big plastic bottle. Look like a freezer pack. Yeah, yeah. So what they've tried to do is reduce the amount of plastic that they use. And now you get these... Like sachets instead. So that's that. You also get your yeast. And in here we should have, in one end, the most important thing in home brewing is the purifier. So you mix this with water and use it to purify everything and make sure it's all clean. I, I think it's kind of like um, okay. Milton sterilising tablets, yeah, but in powder form. Um, and it's food safe apparently as well. And then this is the new bit that I've never used before. This is the hop, hop oil stuff or whatever it is. And um, this goes in at some point in the brewing process and adds additional flavours. So in there there should be, yeah, you can see this fluid in there. These are quite funky little things actually. I think that's now the only sort of hard plastic part of it. And there you go, talking about um, not reusing, like, pla not sorry, not wasting plastic bottles and cans. So glass bottles and metal cans, obviously. Um, since 2021, we've stopped over six and a half million cans entering the UK's waste stream. So there you go. I wonder how many of these we've <laughs> created, though. And one last thing, there is uh, an app that you can download that helps you build this and set it up and use it. So we're going to try, try this brewing situation. Situation. Uh, so this is just a small overview. The rest of the main brewing process is now done on the app. Pretty much how it was back in the day. But I'm pretty sure it starts with purifying and adding our ingredients. Then um, we brew the beer. And that's going to take about two weeks with the uh, other stuff. We add the hopper. And then we condition. Then we tap the beer, drink it, fall over. I did actually get to the point where I didn't need to follow these instructions anymore because I knew it all off the top of my head. Uh, that's how easy it gets when you've done it a few times. Um, but because this is the first time I've done it in a while, I will follow the instructions once more. So I've got the lid off. Everything's very familiar. It looks like the old Pinter 1 kit, apart from I think this part comes out now, which the Pinter 1 1, well, I don't think it was supposed to. <laughs> Our first step actually starts here. We need this dial. 
right the way up to number five. I don't actually have enough arms to record this and do it, so I will probably jump cut just a little bit. What I first step is I'm going to pour uh, the purifying agent into this pinter. Um, what I'm actually going to do though is what it says is pour the purifying agent in and then pour hot water on top of it. What I found it's better to do is to pour the purifying agent into a plastic tumbler and then mix it while you're pouring it in. So you fill the tumbler with hot water, pour some of the hot water in, fill the tumbler with hot water, pour some of the hot water in. All the time mixing the purifying agent because otherwise you just end up with um, the purifying agent left at the end. So these are one of the tips that I picked up with the first kit. And the nice thing about that is you have the double win of then having a purified tumbler to use to top up your water when you get further along. Uh, everything's about keeping clean with brewing beer. If you get any bacteria into the beer, it will go off, it'll go sour, it'll, it won't brew properly. There's our hot water. In goes our purifier. I'm going to ha uh, do a lot of runs on this, so it, it won't just be this. I have to fill the pint up to the fill line. Uh, so it'll probably be, well there's a pint in here, so it'll be ten of these. And it's a bit steamy, but if you look inside there you can see the fill line. It used to be like printed on and now it's like a dark coloured line, so it's much easier to see. Right, the hot water's straight in now. I uh, managed to use all of the uh, cleaner, cleaning agent stuff. So I just fill up to the line. And then we pop the lid on. Lids this two part piece here, both parts have to be in, because obviously both parts are going to touch beer. There we go, lids in place. Can't film this, but now I have to give the pint for a good shake for 20 seconds. You know, you know it'll just be boot man boobs flailing and belly going with it. With that done, we have to put the brewing press on. I'll try and remember how to do this now. What's it? Press down. Can't do this one handed. Can do it two handed though, that's done. And then it gets flipped over for 10 seconds. All the water will then pour, well not all of the water, but some of the water will then pour into the brewing stand. And once that is done, we do twist this round and pull it off. Again, I'm gonna have to do this with both hands though. Brewing stand is now sterilized. There's the water that we uh, just sterilized in there. The next part here is to turn carbon dial off. You hear the air escape. And we get our handle, which is here. I reattach the handle. And we do a five second pour. One, two, three, four, five. A little bit more for measure. Uh, and that is now the mechanism for the tap has been sterilized. And with that done, we take the handle back off and we open this and empty the rest of the water out and sterilization's done. Right, brewing time. Now we've got our sterilization complete. We put up to the black line, we call water in here. And then we add our mix. This is our press. <laughs> I should also say that one of the steps I didn't show was that you have to set the carbonation dial back to what it should be for the beers. I think they're all five at this point. Uh, so I'd done that as well. And then now I am going to pour this in there. This used to be a right mess because the bottles were difficult to get all the fluids out of, but now I must I must admit that is that does seem a bit easier. Some of these will be thicker than others, so if you're making a thick beer like uh Space Hopper, like you need to really double down on mixing it, otherwise you'll just end up with syrup at the bottom of the uh the brewing stand when you make it. This one doesn't look too bad though. Some of them yeah, you study for ages. I mean with the bottles as well because you couldn't squeeze the bottle. In this case I haven't actually squeezed this either, it's just poured out that easily. Next step is probably arguably the most important part. Add the yeast. These are better than they used to be. They used to put these in plastic bottles as well so it's just less wet. It's like papery type thing. I keep all the sterilized stuff together so it doesn't get, you know, it doesn't get dirty off the counter, but the next step, without touching any of the sterilized parts, is to pop the lid back on. And now, yep, yeah, it's time for another 30 seconds of shaking. I need to get that mix mixed. It says 30, I generally go for at least a minute, just to make sure it's properly um, properly shut, because the biggest failure rate I had with the previous pints is only a couple of times, admittedly, in maybe 30 brews, was when I would take the brewing stand off, there would be a lot of the syrup left, or the press that you've just poured in, left in the bottom of the brewing dock. 
Uh, so basically you just end up with a very watery, not very alcoholic beer. I still drink it, but... <laughs> oh! <laughs> that, that, that's uh, more uh, intensive than I thought. There's, uh, well, I guess, five, it's only like five kilos of water in a bit, ten pints, but... Um, <laughs> shaking it for a minute. <laughs> Certainly works you out a lot. I've, actually, I've been doing some lifting. Just some small weights, so... Um, that, that's probably going to help. Anyway, next step, I need to get that onto the dock. All done, I have to say the pint of three dot goes on much easier than the pint of one dot did. Honestly, with that done, we flip it over. The brewing process starts. Now the app will keep track of when I need to uh, put that into condition. So we'll catch up then. But what I am going to do is I'm going to flip it over and I'm going to put it in a bucket. The bucket is just a precaution. Fluid shouldn't come out of the bottom of it, but in the past... I have had problems, and the trick for that actually used to be, I might, oh, it's probably at the back of the cupboard, I have some food grade silicon sealant up there, not silicon sealant, it's silicon uh, grease, and there's a little o-ring on that brewing dock that we just popped on. Periodically, just a little bit of a food grade silicon sealant around that seems to keep them fresh. Although, to be honest, the only real time I ever had trouble with leakages was when I was making really strong IPA, it was like 7.6%, the spare topper one. Uh, I think the pressure must have built up and uh, it leaked out the bottom. Once it had leaked, it was fine. <laughs> um, I did have once have a problem when I made the stout. I opened the carbonation dial on the back. Uh, the, it was very different, the carbonation dial in the original pint. It was a bit awkward actually. And foam sprayed out up the back of the fridge, so that wasn't great. Uh, but yeah, other than that, now we'll probably catch up again at the conditioning phase, which is in, I think, seven or eight, nine days, maybe, something like that. Um, and then, obviously, uh, w w the, the last stage is the most fun part, is drinking it. There she be in a handy bo uh, bucket. I have just noticed that this carbonation dial has dropped. It should be up at five, so I'll just turn that up. This is where the hot oil goes in. So it has now been a week, and I just got a message on the app to say that my beer is ready for conditioning so before we condition it we do have to put our hopper oil in it hop oil whatever it is in it <laughs> and that's this bad boy here so i've taken the top off obviously and i'll take the top off this take the top of the pint to take the top off this pop it in hopefully line it up straight Screw it in, and then the contents of this little hop uh, vial thing pour into the beer, and then we unscrew. I hope we do anyway. Oh, there was a little bit of spurtage there because this is under pressure now because there's been bre brewing of beer, so you probably want to not have this too close to uh, like your, your, your laundry like I've got. <laughs> But yeah, it wasn't too bad, it was just that little drop there and a little bit spurred on me. Screw your lid back in and we're all done. And now this is ready to uh, take off the brewing stand. So that, um, if you've used Pinter before, that's, um, if, you've, if you've only used Pinter 1, that'll be a new step to you because that is an addition to the process that wasn't previously uh, like part of this at all. Uh, apparently it just adds more flavours to the beer. So anyway, I'm going to get it off the brewing stand now. The brew, it comes off the brewing stand by twisting and pulling. Uh, I'm going to have to do it uh, two-handed, so I'm not going to be able to vlog it. And there it is. It's off the brewing stand. And this is what we want to see. If your beer's done properly, the trub comes out. Uh, so this is the yeast from the brewing process. So this looks like we've had a good, successful brew on this. Um, yeah, there's quite a lot of it there. So what you can actually do with this as well, and I've did this in a vlog when I did I had the first pint, is you can take this and make bread out of it, and then you get beer bread, and it tastes amazing. I'll probably do that at some point, but this time around I won't. It's basically just yeasty, pasty stuff. It smells of beer. <laughs> and with that complete. We can put the lid on this so it looks a bit prettier, but I always forget. Uh, but the pinter then goes in the fridge to condition. An additional optional stage here will be to cold crash it, which is where you leave it on the brewing stand. Put it in the fridge for a day or two, and that really gets you apparently really good clear beer. I quite like a bit of sediment in my beer though, so I'm not really too fussed about that. 
And in the meantime, I'm going to give this a clear up uh, and then uh, it'll be ready for the next brew, which, which I should be getting another pack. I'm going to say maybe next week. Uh, so once we finish drinking this beer, we can brew another one. So I'll probably when we finish this, I mean, it'll be ready for drinking Saturday. So we'll probably finish it Saturday afternoon. <laughs> Here it is, the final stage of the pinter. It is brewed, it is conditioned, I now need to put the handle on. Probably the right way around should help, you know. <laughs> and it clips into place. Normally, I'll it, with the old one certainly, I would just leave this whole thing in the fridge and just pour directly out of the fridge into my mouth. Um, <coughs> no, <laughs> into a glass. So I need to pour it, but it's a two-handed operation, but basically we just pull the handle back just a little bit and pour the beer slowly, and then as we get towards the end... We have to pull the handle back further because it's gravity and pressure fed. Uh, if at any point the pour stops because there's not enough pressure left, carbonation dial down to off, opens up the carbonation dial for the pressure, lets her in through the back and lets you pour the rest of the beer. That's the theory. Let's see what happens. Here goes. I've, I've, I've got a spur pair of hands to help. Oops. First time with a pint of three, so I'm not sure what's pouring and what's not. Looks like we've got it though. Yeah. There's a bit of fist to it as well. Here we go. Let me give it a whirl. Come on. Not bad, that actually. There's the thumbnail. <laughs> Definitely sessionable. Mm -hmm. Doing a bit more flavour to it, I think. Some of the other ones have got a bit more flavours than this one. This one's quite light. I go a, three and a half on that one. Is this the Yeasty Boys one? The Yeasty Boys Session Big Mouth Remix. Point two. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, there we go. Pint of three beers, so I'm sure we'll be doing more of these over the next coming sort of few months or so. <clears throat> it's nice to be back, you're brewing me on a bit, well, brewing with the pint. Really. Yeah. So, thank you for watching. Cheers. I'm going to last. Not on a warm day like this.